And dreamy lullaby, my catalogue is long through every passion ranging, and to your humors changing, I tune my supper song, I tune my song. Sentiment is wanted. I patriotic ballads cut and dried. For whatever country's banner may be planted, all other local banners are defied. Our warriors in seven ranks assemble. Never quit for they conceal it if they do. And they shouldn't be surprised if nations tremble before the mighty troops, the troops of Titi and if you call for the song of the sea, we'll heave the capstan and rise. With a yo be hope for the wind is free. And anchors a trip as a hands are leaf. Put up for the homeward bound. Yo, hee ho, put up for the homeward bound. To lay a 
Oft in a howling breeze may tickle a landsman's taste, but the happiest hour a sailor sees is when he's down at an inland town with his Nancy on his knees. Yo ho! And his armor round the waist. And then the captain of me too, and the ships are proud. And you'll be too, and it will be no one more. Of a ballad songs and snatches and dreamy lullaby and dreamy lullaby lullaby. And what may your business be with Yum Yum? I'll tell you. A year ago, I was a member of the Titipu Town Band. It was my duty to take the cap round for contributions. Whilst discharging this delicate office, I saw Yum Yum. We loved each other at once, but she was betrothed to her guardian, Coco, a cheap tailor, and I saw that my suit was hopeless. Overwhelmed with grief, I quitted the town. Judge of my delight when I discovered a month ago that Coco had been condemned to death for flirting. I hurried back at once in the hope of finding Yum Yum at liberty to listen to my protestations. It is true that Coco was condemned to death for flirting, but he was reprieved at the last moment and raised to the exalted rank of Lord High Executioner under the following remarkable circumstances. <laughs> The Cardo virtuous man, when he to rule our land began, resolved to try a plan whereby a man might best be steady. So he decreed in words and things that all who flirt and lid or wings, unless on you be a living, should forthwith be beheaded, 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 should forthwith be beheaded. Now as we agree that he was right to so decree. And we are right, and you are right, and all is right as right can be. And you are right, and we are right, and all is right as right as right can be. And all is right as right can be. Right as right can be. And decree you'll understand Cause great dismay throughout the land For young and old and shy and bold Were equally affected The youth who winked a roving eye Or breathed an unconnubial sigh Was thereupon condemned to die He usually objected, objected, objected He usually objected And you'll allow, as I expect, that he was right to so object. And we are right, and you are right, and everything is quite correct. And you are right, and we are right, and all is right, is right, is quite correct. And everything is quite correct. Straight 
left out on bail, a convict from the county jail, whose head was next on some pretext, condemned to be blown off. A brave impetment, for we said, who's next to be the carpet's head, cannot cut off another's head until he's cut his own off, his own off, his own off, until he's cut his own off. Now, as I expect, that he was right to so object. And we are right, and you are right, and all is right, and all are And you are right, and we are right, and all is right, and all is right, and we are right, and all is right. The cheap tailor, Lord High Executioner of Titipoo. Why, that's the highest rank a citizen can attain. It is. Our logical Mikado is seeing no moral difference between the dignified judge who condemns a man to die and the industrious mechanic who carries out the sentence has rolled the two offices into one and every judge is now his own executioner. But how good of you, for I see that you are a nobleman of the highest rank to condescend to tell all this to me, a mere strolling minstrel. Don't mention it. I am, in point of fact, a particularly haughty and exclusive person of pre-Adamite ancestral descent. You'll understand this when I tell you I can trace my ancestry back to a protoplasmal primordial atomic globule. <laughs> Consequently, my family pride is something inconceivable. I can't help it. I was born sneering. But I struggle hard to overcome this defect. I mortify my pride continually. When all other high officers of state declined their posts because they were too proud to serve under an ex-tailor, did I not unhesitatingly accept all their posts at once? And the salaries attached to them, you did. Consequently, it is my degrading duty to serve this upstart as First Lord of the Treasury, Lord High Admiral, Lord Chief Justice, Commander-in-Chief, Master of the Buckhounds, Groom of the Backstairs, Archbishop of Titipoo, and Lord Mayor, both acting and elect, all rolled into one and at a salary. A pool bar paid for his services. I, a salaried minion. But I do it. It revolts me. But I do it. And it does you credit. Oh, but I don't stop there. I dine with middle class people on reasonable terms. I dance at cheap suburban parties for a moderate fee. I even accept refreshments at any hands, however lowly. <laughs> I even retail state secrets for a very low figure. For instance, any further information about yum yum would come under the head of state secret. Oh. <clears throat> <gasps> Another insult! And I think a light one. <laughs> Young man, despair, likewise go to. Yum, yum, the fair you must not do. It will not do, I'm sorry for you, you very imperfect ablutioner. This very day from school, yum, yum, will went away and home would come with beats of drum. And a rum dum dum to wait the Lord High Executioner. The trumpet and the brass would blast, and the trumpet play, and the cardinal on the wedding day. She toddled away as all of her with the Lord High Executioner. And the brass would blast, and the trumpet play, and the 
gentlemen, I am much touched by this reception. I can only trust that by strict attention to duty, I shall ensure a continuance of those favours which it will ever be my study to deserve. Should I ever be called to act uh, professionally, I am happy to think that I will have no problem in finding plenty of people whose loss would be a distinct gain to society at large. As someday it may happen that a victim must be found, I've got a little list, I've got a little list of society offenders who might well be underground, who never would be missed, who I would be missed. There's celebrities and footy stars who won't give autographs. They're overpaid and not so bright and up their own. <clears throat> They're featured in the Daily Mail and stories they do tell. And people who believe in hell, they're sure to go to hell. And that singular absurdity, the Jubilean Olympist, I think he's Brahms and Liszt. I'm sure he won't be missed. He's got a monolist. He's got a monolist. And another will be missed. Then one more, then be missed. There's the fast food consumer and the others in that place whose stuffing does not cease. They're sure to be obese. And the people who eat fish and chips and burp it in your face, they never would be missed. They never would be missed. Then the idiot who shouts aloud with enthusiastic tone all night in the high streets, the country up and down. And the hoodie who wears baggy jeans with undies hanging out, who's never done a day of work. He's simply just a lout. And that annoying phenomenon, Lord Sugar's apprentice, he's top of my list. I'm sure he's not been missed. He's got a monolist, he's got a monolist, and then none of them be missed, then none of them be missed. And those Facebookers and tweeters who just now are rather rife, it gives us lots of strife, they need to get a life. They fill up our pages with lots of expletives. They'll never be retweeted. I'm sure they'll be deleted. All audiences who are noisy and always like a chat and leave their mobile phones on and text and tweet. What? Twats? <laughs> and the coalition government of the compromising kind with Cameron Osborne and who's the other find? They've all been to public school, but hey, never mind, for they'd none of them be missed. They'd none of them be missed. You may put them on the list, you may put them on the list, and then none of them be missed, then none of them be missed. Then none of them be missed. Then none of them be missed. Pooh bar, it seems that the festivities in connection with my approaching marriage must last a week. I would like to do handsomely, and I will not consult you on how much I ought to spend upon them. Certainly, in which of my capacities, as Chancellor of the Exchequer, Privy Purse, Attorney General or Private Secretary? Oh, suppose we say as Private Secretary. As Private Secretary, I should have no problem in saying, as the city will pay for it, don't stint yourself. Do it well. Exactly as the city will have to pay for it. That is your advice? As Private Secretary, of course, as Chancellor of the Exchequer, I should see that due economy is observed. Well, you just said just now, don't stint yourself, do it well. As Private Secretary. And now you're saying due economy must be observed. As Chancellor of the Exchequer. Oh, well, I see. Come over here, where the Chancellor can't hear us. <laughs> now, as my solicitor, how would you advise us to deal with this difficulty? As your solicitor, I should have no hesitation in saying Chance it. Thank you, I will. Of course, as Lord Chief Justice, I should see the law isn't violated. I see. Come over here where the Lord Chief Justice can't hear us. Now, as the First Lord of the Treasury. Hmm. As forced to First Lord of the Treasury, I could, of course, propose a vote to cover all expenses. If it were not that, as Leader of the Opposition, it would be my duty to fight it. Tooth or nail? Oh, 
This is or, it. as Paymaster General, I could so cook the books that as Lord High Auditor, I should never discover my deceit. Well, that, but that of is... course, as Archbishop of Titipool, I would have to denounce my dishonesty and turn myself in to my own custody as First Commissioner of Police. Well, that's extremely awkward. I never said that these distinguished people couldn't be squared, but of course they would have to be brought down in their own estimations by something like a very considerable bribe. The matter shall have my careful consideration. In the meantime, my bride and...